One, two, three, four. The first mate never checked The crew below the deck The captain had a kip And went down with the ship Was miles away, packed the cans with hay. The surgeon gave a fig that ended in the brig. How many are the dead by the Admiral of the Red? Wave the flag all you can, body bags are in the sand. Wave the flag. You can pay for by a businessman. The gunner gave all he could, but cannons were no good. The powder monkeys ran, a drowned just off Japan. But how many tears are shed by the Admiral of the Red? How many tears are shed by the Admiral of the Red? Wave the flag all you can, body bags are in the sand. Wave the flag all you can, paid for by a businessman. Hello, um, so that was Admiral of the Red and I uh, got the idea the the Admiral of the Red I came across, I was looking through uh, online for some reason um, Dictionary of 19th Century Slang and Admiral of the Red was used as an insult to call somebody drunk because their face would be flushed red from too much alcohol um, and it just sounded a nice phrase and I just thought well I'll do a little bit more investigation and it turns out that Admiral of the Red was actually a naval term and if you're interested in history the English Navy going back into uh, the time of Elizabeth I <clears throat> was organized in three squadrons you had uh, red white and blue there was red squadron white squadron blue squadron and in the beginning at least the Admiral of the Red was really the the fleet admiral so you had an admiral of the blue an admiral of the white and then a fleet admiral who was sort of nominally also uh admiral of the red later on it actually became a title but i'm not really a naval uh guy although having said that i've written uh in this uh, sequence of songs i think there was death on the ocean wave um there's admiral of the red and there was the idiot tide so for some reason I, I, there's a lot of uh, sea metaphors um, appearing in my writing but I think this will be the last I think we've had enough um, seamen for one for one uh, year so I'll try and look elsewhere for inspiration but so I had the phrase Admiral of the Red and it it just felt um, when I tied it up with these chords that it would it's, it's, it, the idea was that it's Admiral, Admiral of the Red is a person who is responsible for causing bloodshed in the world. Um, and so you have this uh, situation where you have the ship and the, the upper officers are all neglectful in some way of their duty. So the, the first officer is not checking on the cargo, he's not checking on the crew. Um, the captain just decides to go for a, for a kip. Um, the victims are the powder monkeys uh, who are in the third verse and they are 
the powder monkeys were the, the kids usually whose job was to ferry gunpowder from the stores to to the to the cannons and they had a hard life and an early death a lot of them so but obviously this is a metaphor for you know suffering in the world and um so it's not specifically about powder monkeys i mean uh, it's hopefully more uh, applicable to the world than that um and the you may have noticed on the guitar i've got a capo uh, originally i had it in the key of d and it was just uh, it was just too high for my voice i've noticed that i've not been very comfortable singing recently and um i decided to try to lower the the key um and so i did it in a but when i was playing it in a um it's it's quite weird the way the guitar works because you on a piano, the the chords will sound. I mean, you can transpose from one key to another, and it doesn't really change the sound. the The relation between the notes is the same. But on the guitar, um, so originally it was. I don't know if you can see, but on the A, I'm going to a sustain a sus, sus four chord. But in that key, it was too high. So then I went down to A. But when I played it in A, the, the sus4, it doesn't really stand out in the same way. You can't really hear it. Or at least to my ears, it didn't sound right. So then I th thought I'd change it and see if I can get a, a suitable key that would sound good on the guitar. But also be more comfortable for singing so i basically ended up doing this which allows me to play in the a i'm playing a g shape chord but that suspended fourth you can hear it more easily And that's about it. I quite like. I really like the song. Actually, it's it's a little bit different. I think from from the other songs. But hopefully, each song has been a little bit different in some way because I don't like repeating myself. And um, I think uh, yeah, I think I achieved. I, mean, I think I mentioned in the previous video, in the A video to to this, uh, I mentioned that I wanted to write a song like the Lars, and I think I've sort of done it. It's not too. Hopefully, it's not too. Um, too much of a rip-off and it has its own um, sort of sense of originality to it but I think I've achieved what I wanted to do and obviously I'd like to do this song in the style of the Lars with you know uh, rhythm guitars acoustic rhythm guitars with it but with an electric lead guitar maybe doing a nice riff um, and a bass and backing vocals and all the usual and I think it could work really, really well. It's a bit short, but then it's nice sometimes to do short songs. I mean, a lot of the songs, some of the songs, uh, I think have been around four minutes. I think that's probably, you know, about the usual limit for, for, a, pop, for a pop song. So this one was fairly, came out fairly easily. The, the ideas just sort of seemed to come out. The, um, the sort of bridge thing. Well, it's actually B minor, I guess, because it's a thing. It's the A minor shape, so B minor. Uh, da -da, that'll be G major, D major, A major, D. Then back to the. So, um, I hope you enjoyed that. I will see you soon. I'm working already on the next song. Take care. Bye-bye.